so um, I've been having trouble with the F10 uh, 535i overheating and having some coolant problems. Um, so I ran a diagnostic on it um, and I found out that the water pump was shutting off because of a blockage. So I'm assuming that is the thermostat. So we're going to go in there and we're going to kind of revamp the cooling system. So we're going to change the thermos thermostat, which is not serviceable. We have to change the whole housing and everything. Um, we're going to change the water pump since we're going to be in there. And then we'll uh, refill with some fresh BMW coolant and some distilled water. So um, I know this is a pretty common problem for N55, so I figured I'd make a video on it. Um, a lot of the videos I've seen aren't great quality, so I don't know if this will be any better, but hopefully I can shed some light or give some extra tips that help you through this tricky job. So um, I've ordered the coolant kit from FCP Euro. Um, it was the best price, um, and it's all inclusive. It comes with the screws, the water pump, the thermostat, and the coolant. So you don't need anything else. Um, so we'll open that up. And then I also got a quick jack lift, um, a 7,000 um, pound lift. So we're gonna try that out for the first time. I got it on offer up, so it's already set up. So all I gotta do is just place it on the car with the blocks, lift it up and uh, lock it into place. So let's get started. All right, so we'll open up this uh, package from FCP Euro. All of the parts from SCP Euro allegedly come with a lifetime warranty, so coolant, oil, anything, all comes with a lifetime warranty. So I don't know who would return their coolant, but I'm sure there's people out there who do it. So I'm guessing this is the water pump. So as you can see, it's only held in with three bolts. So I know the bottom two are, are pretty easy, but the top one is kind of tricky to get to, so hopefully I come up with some tips for you guys to get that out. And then now we have the thermostat and the housing. So this is what I think is the actual problem. Um, I don't think the thermostat is actually opening up, but um, this isn't a serviceable part. You can't take this apart and just replace the, uh, the thermostat. You have to replace this whole housing. So, And then these are the three water pump bolts. And then I'm guessing this is for the thermostat. And then you have your coolant. So, All right, so now that we have everything unpacked, we're going to drain the coolant, and then we're going to remove the thermostat and the water pump, and then we'll replace them, button them back up, and um, I'll show you how to bleed the cooling system. All right, so the first thing you need to do is remove this bottom tray. Um, it's a 5 16th bit, and there's like 10 or 15 screws. So just remove them all, and it should fall down. So the next thing you want to remove is this plastic shroud um, because you're going to want to drop the sway bar and if you don't drop this then you can't drop the sway bar so it's just another one of the 5 16th screw on the other side back here and it should give you enough room to uh to come down so once that screws out and this goes in between these two plastic pieces when you put it back together but now this will give us enough room to to drop the sway bar and you're going to do the same exact thing on the other side Probably not a great angle, but you're going to want to take these two Torx screws out. Um, if you don't have an E bit, then you can use a 14 millimeter 12 point socket, um, and that'll loosen these up. But they're pretty on there; they're on there pretty tight, and so you're going to have to uh, probably get a breaker bar to get those open. But do the two on each side, and drop the sway bar. All right, so I got the uh, sway bar bracket off. The shorter bolt goes in the front, and the longer bolt goes in the back. So remember that when you're putting it back together but now you can kind of pull this back out of the way. And then here we can see that's the water pump. So these are the two screws up front for the water pump and then there's one on top, so. All right, so now we have to move the radiator fan. Uh, to do that, the first thing we're gonna remove is these two bars. Um, I don't know why, but this one's a 15 millimeter and this one's a 16 millimeter. So you just have to remove this bolt and then loosen this one and you can sw like swivel it out of the way. So next you're gonna lift this cover on each side and then there's two T30 uh, bolts that you're gonna remove. And then once you get those on both sides, you're gonna move this plastic pin here. There's a plastic pin on each side. All right, so once you get these plastic tabs out, you're gonna lift this up, and there's four bolts on each side. So then after you get these bolts, there's two T30 bolts right here that come out. All right, so once you get these two bolts out, this one's a little tricky, it's a T40. I'm using a quarter inch wrench over my T40 bit. 
and I'm using that to turn it instead of a socket. So now that you have that out, you should be able to pull this out. And then the only thing attached to it is going to be the trunk or the hood latch wire. So that just clips in, you unclip it, and now you can take it out. So for this wire, I don't know if you guys can see, there's a little clip right here. If you press on it and you pull on this, it should come out. Like that. Clip right here that holds it in, you just press down on this and pull out, and it'll come out. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a little tab right here on the top of the fan. All you do is take a flathead screwdriver and pry it back and pull up. And do that on both sides and the fan will come right out. All right, so I wanna show you guys the hardest part about this job. It's getting that top bolt on top of the water pump. There's a little metal clip that holds on a wire. You're, wanting, you're gonna wanna pop that off to give you some room to get into the bolt. But I use a mini a socket with an adapter to get to a 3 8 kind of slim wall uh, socket and you're going to want to go under these hoses so it's kind of hard to see but but you're going to want to get the socket in this position and just ratchet away it's a pain in the rear but if you can get a mini mini socket wrench in there or mini ratchet it's going to make your life super easy and once you get this this is the hardest part of the whole job so I tackled this bolt first. So once you get that top bolt, do the same thing to these two right here. And then we can remove the hoses and start draining the coolant and uh, remove this water pump. So I definitely recommend removing all the bolts on the uh, water pump first, because then you'll be able to move it and get better access to the, the hose clamps and stuff. Because if it's still bolted in, it'll be pretty tight getting to those back hose clamps. I know you can't see them, but it's a six millimeter bolt. Um, that holds it on and then there's also a connector um, or electrical connector so you're going to want to take um, the electrical connector off first and get it out of the way and then remove that six millimeter bolt on the hose clamp and uh, drain the coolant so have a bucket or something ready to catch it all all right so once you loosen up that six millimeter bolt you'll be able to get this clamp out and then just have a bucket ready to drain it and then there's another hose but you have to get this electrical connector off first and then you'll be able to see back there to get the uh, other bolt. You can't really see it on camera, but there's another hose back there. And, uh, and then we're going to remove it through the top because trying to get it down through here, you're going to hit the rack and pinion. So now you can see the water pump is loose. So now that it's loose, since we took all this stuff out up top, we're going to be able to get it out through the top. And see. Oh. Well. I was wrong, it actually does fit through the bottom. So we got it through the bottom. So next we're gonna wanna take off the uh, thermostat. Okay, so with the thermostat, under these two bars, you can't really see it on camera. There's a one screw holding the thermostat in, and then you have a hose clamp on the front that uh, takes a six millimeter bolt. So I just used a six millimeter wrench to loosen that up. And then the one in the back is one of those BMW style retainer clip so you pop up the retainer clip and it comes off and then this one right here you'll use pliers and then the one underneath these right here you'll use um, again one of those retainer clips you'll pop up the retainer clip and pop it off and then you have the electrical cable so remove all those and then it should come out pretty easy it's a pretty easy job especially compared to the water pump so once you get the thermostat out more will drain out from this top radiator uh, hose right here but um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the water pump back in um, and then put the thermostat back in and button this back up. So it's pretty much the reverse of what we did to put it in. Um, obviously that back hose from the, uh, the thermostat might be a little bit difficult. Uh, just kind of use your resources to get everything back in place. Um, I probably wouldn't use power tools to tighten down the hose clamps and stuff because you might bust a hose clamp, but um, other than that, it's a pretty straightforward process of going in reverse of what I just showed you. All right, so I was editing the video and for some reason the bleeding process video was corrupted. So um, what you're gonna wanna do is what I, or what I did was I filled up the coolant reservoir um, to the top and I kinda let it uh, bubble up until it stopped. And then I started the car and ran the car so it would get up to temperature and open the thermostat. 
Um, and then from there, I turned off the car and I started the bleeding process. And to do the bleeding process, what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna turn on the car, but not start the engine. So all you have on is just the accessories. And then you're gonna turn this switch to heat so that it shows red right here. And then you're gonna wanna turn the heat all the way up to 84 degrees, but you're gonna wanna make sure that the fan is on the lowest settings. And then once you do that, you're going to hold the gas pedal down for 15 seconds. And once you hold the gas pedal down for 15 seconds, the water pump will kick on um, and it'll run for about 10 to 15 minutes. And so you're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on the coolant reservoir to make sure that it stays full. Um, you don't want it to run empty because it'll, can, it'll put air into the system. So, and then also I recommend putting a battery charger on your car because running that for 12 minutes could drain your battery um, and kill your battery. So that's the bleeding process. Let that happen. You'll see inside the, um, the reservoir that the coolant is flowing. If everything is working, um, it should be flowing back into the reservoir and you'll see the air bubbles pop up. Um, the other thing too, is when you're running the car to open up the thermostat, keep the reservoir cap open. Um, because if it gets up to temp and you open that cap, it'll spray you. So that's pretty much it for the bleeding process. All right, so I got everything back together up top and I got the under tray back on. Um, I had the car bleeding while I was doing that, so it's pretty full. I don't hear any more air bubbles, so I'm gonna let it off the lift and take it for a drive and uh, hopefully we don't have any other uh, problems, but that's basically the process. It's not that hard. Um, it's definitely worth doing the job if you're uh, looking to save some money on doing the water pump and thermostat. In total, I think this cost me about $400. So yeah, if you have an N55 and you've got 100,000 miles or more and this hasn't happened yet, I definitely recommend doing it to prevent yourself from getting stranded because once your engine overheats, these cars do a pretty good job of shutting themselves down. So uh, you're not going to be able to really drive until it cools back down and they heat up pretty fast. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, drop a like on the video and check out some of my other videos on the uh, N55 F10. So. See you guys next time. No brain, uh, I'm just really trying to show you no love. Say you tired and you need a new love. Use what you got for your lose love. See new things with your fuse up. Yeah, you want new things.